Hi there. My name is Vincent, and I would like to present an experiment that I've been doing on this archive data set that you can find on Kaggle. This data set contains lots and lots of abstracts and titles and metadata of academic journals and papers that you can find on the archive website that's been maintained by Cornell University. Now, the reason that I'm interested in this is because I like to find articles that interest me. And I've noticed that just using text search is kind of hard, but I do have vibes and feelings of stuff that I'm interested in. So I just wanted to have a tool that helps me with that. And although what I've got right now is just a preview, uh, here's the tool in question. On the face of it, I'm really not doing anything fancy. I'm just taking every abstract. I am turning that into some sort of a vector representation. Um, I'm using sentence transformers for this. And then this is stored in a vector database. Uh, I'm using LandsDB in this particular case. And that means that if I then have a query, that I can also turn that into an array. And then via this database, I should be able to get results back based on these vector similarities. And I'm using cosine similarity. As we'll see in a moment, uh, this tool actually does a few things extra. But just to get the vibes going, uh, let's just start writing a query. And I prepared something. So let's say I'm interested in data sets for label quality. Then uh, maybe a sentence like this well-known data set has bad labels in it. Maybe something like that. That kind of fits the vibe of what I'm after. I can hit search. And after a small bit, I get some results back. And some of the stuff that I've got here is, you know, in the realm of what I'm interested in. But the cool thing about doing kind of neural search, especially if you've got embeddings that are kind of big, which I'm using, then this is less and less like a search query and more and more like a prompt these days. Apparently, this sentence gives a little bit of context of what I'm interested in. But if the matches here aren't great, I can just keep on adding some more keywords here. So I'm going to describe what I want, again, by sort of trying to put my vibes into words. So something like we should not have bad labels, that might also be appropriate. And just by glancing at some of these titles, it feels already a bit better, but why stop here? We can just keep on adding a bunch of context as well. And I think one thing that's missing right now is that data quality is important for downstream tasks. After all, label issues are one thing, but the real reason why we're concerned is about the algorithm that follows after. So when I look at this, this already feels kind of all right. And what I could do is I could sort of scroll and look around. But at this point in time, as I was playing with this, I also noticed that just something was kind of missing. I mean, one thing I could do is I could just keep on writing a quote unquote better prompt. I could keep on trying to describe what I'm after more and more. But at some point I noticed that finding the right words can be tricky because I don't exactly know what words are in the database. And at this point, it also feels like it's a lot easier to maybe look for a few examples that I really like, look for a few examples that I really don't, and maybe that can be part of the search query as well. So just an example, uh, this title over here, identifying mislabeled instances in classification data sets, that so sounds like what I'm after. So what I can do is I can click this, and I can say this is a definite positive match. I can also scroll down a bit, and I have this article over here, data sheets for data sets. It's a good article, by the way, makes some good points, but it's not what I'm after right now because it's not really about an existing data set that has bad labels in it. So this is a negative match. And I think this new PCA-based utility stuff, synthetic data, yeah, that's also not what I'm after. So what's so cool about this? Well, I've just technically annotated some data, and this can really help give some context in what I want. So why not consider this part of the query? And that's exactly what I'm doing. If I hit search now, then these search results are going to be replaced and they're going to be influenced by these annotations that I've just done. Now, I've done this exercise before, and in general, I have found that the results that I get back here, just on a vibe check, they do seem to match. I really can get pretty far by thinking about what prompts to write in here, but these annotations at the end, they really help me get to that last part of the mile that I want to go. And taking a step back here, I also think there's something really cool happening here. Again, I could have chosen to maybe investigate embeddings a bit more. I could have thrown more tensors at it, maybe more compute or like a bigger database with a better index. But something about taking this machine learning problem and turning that more into a UI problem really made the experience a whole lot better. And I'm really not doing anything fancy here. The way this works currently under the hood is I'm just taking the semi-supervised submodule of scikit-learn and I'm taking some of the label propagation algorithms that they've got. This is the input for... Uh, that algorithm, so there's like three data points going into that. But that is used to sort what I'm getting back from my database from this query. And something about that combination really works well, because what I can do from here is I can maybe adapt the prompt. 
I could maybe write something like, um, you know what? I'm more interested in uh, medical computer vision, for example. I can totally change the prompts from here. Then I can see some more examples. And I can maybe add an annotation or maybe remove one. But searching is now more of a conversation. It's less of a static thing where I just chuck something in, I hope something comes back out. Um, searching now happens over a session. And I have really just found that by doing stuff like this, I am really finding more interesting papers to read or to glance at. And that's exactly what I want. So at this point, I'm hoping that you're looking at this and you're kind of going, gee, that's actually kind of cool. And if you think you've got some notes to share, I would love to exchange ideas. My name is Vincent. Please find me on socials. And I'm definitely eager to maybe uh, get the conversation and ball rolling on this because I do think there's a lot of good ideas in Archive and I'm interested in finding ways to maybe make it easier to find stuff. So again, if this sounds interesting and uh, you've got an interesting background on this, just let me know. Another thing I would also maybe like to emphasize here is that it's also kind of awesome to live in this time now because there's just so many cool tools to build upon. It didn't take me weeks to build this. I'm using tools like HTMX, so making this user interface was super easy. I've got tools like scikit-learn, so experimenting in a notebook, super dandy. But also there's tools like modal and sentence transformers that also make it very affordable for me to take a data set with like 600,000 plus abstracts and just get embeddings for them um, for a very uh, affordable fee. But the biggest point I want to drive home here is that maybe some of this ML stuff should be considered as a UI problem. I really do think that having some more of this interactive stuff happening where I can sort of keep on exploring and there's a system here to help me, that that's going to be very powerful. And I would love to see more systems maybe do that. If this sounds interesting, there's a link in the show notes with a blog post that has a little bit more details. Um, but again, I hope that people thought this was an interesting demo. And yeah, reach out if you think this is interesting. I do want to explore this more. This is a new hobby of mine.